He's a... Uh, um, he's an interesting fellow. <laughs> So, Mungo's years with the fishermen of Oyster Bay have made him a skillful boatman. He swiftly hoists the sail of the small boat and sets course due west the, across the silvery blue sea. The, hands, the, la, uh, the, hand, the land soon recedes into the distance, and you sit back on the deck, relaxing in the afternoon sunshine. From the stern, you hear a merry whistling, the creak of the rudder, and Mungo occasionally calling out to a seabird passing overhead. You think about the good times you used to have with Mungo. His constant cheerful nature and willingness to help people in need. You find it difficult to believe that so much evil exists in the land and that lives the likes of Mungo. As the hours drift by, you talk and laugh, trying to ignore the dangers ahead. Mungo was always one to tell a tale, and he is now telling you about his father and how he used to work in a travelling circus. Do you want to be Mungo, Ross? Oh, what's Mungo's voice? Er, he was a big man, as big as a mountain. <laughs> and he would uh, do just about anything for a paying crowd. Wrestle trolls, have elephants stand on him, uh, and even let a killer bee sting him. He was a tough old customer, but he finally met his match in the north. Uh, the circus was in Fang as one of the attractions during the festivities surrounding the Trial of Champions. And my father decided on a whim to enter. He walked into Death Trap Dungeon, and alas, he was never seen again. It was really too old for such an ordeal. Although, there was no telling him that. But at least he tried. Just as Mango's about to tell you his next trail, he jumps up and shouts, And oi! At the top of his voice, as though he were yelling the news to the crew of a galleon. You look to where he's pointing and see Fire Island in the distance. The island sits on the sea like a green cushion, with, with a jagged mountain protruding up from it. Smoke gently curls up from its top, a volcano's fuming anger waiting to explode. Mango steers the boat towards a small inlet at the eastern tip of the island, hoping that it will remain concealed between the high rocks. You both put on your backpacks and clamber out the boat to begin your quest to find the Lizard King. If you want to go left and scramble round the rocks to the beach cove, turn to 24. And if you want to go right and explore the inlet, turn to 33. Okay. Our first decision. Yeah. I think we would be amiss not to explore a little bit. It's just the start. They're not going to throw anything scary so. at us, are they? Yeah, a little inlet could be nice. Got another vote for inlet in chat there. Oh, I don't think Monk was long for this world, though. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We can hold out hope. Maybe he'll survive with us. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if <laughs> shall we? Shall we try the inlet then? Yeah. You soon reach the beach, but duck back down behind the rocks when you see what's happening on it. A rowing boat has been dragged onto the beach, obviously by the six pirates who are standing around a large chest. You look at Mungo and discuss what to do. If you wish to attack the pirates, turn to 340. But if you'd rather t return and explore the beach cove instead, turn to 24. Why would we attack the pirates? Yeah. It seems well, we're completely outnumbered. Like, hey pirates, um, there's some lizard folk here. Um, maybe, uh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, chatting to the pirates isn't an option. No, this is not an RPG. This is a I choose your own adventure. These are like prototype RPGs. <laughs> hmm. Got a suggestion in chat that we're a great swordsman, so we could try fighting. But uh, are we a good enough swordsman to fight six pirates? Mm. 
Yeah, I think we are. All right. Although I think Alan might be trying to get us killed. So. <laughs> Should we go? I'll for leave it? this one up to you. I don't want to fight them, but I don't want to just leave them. Right. It's another vote for fighting the pirates. Well, fight the pirates. You both draw your swords and run down onto the beach, hoping to catch the pirates off guard. You manage to cut two down before they're able to draw their cutlasses, and when you each fight two of the remaining four at the same time. You must fight! If you defeat them, turn to 61, and if you lose... Splits. <laughs> if you lose, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's see what this you button must does. Fight. Okay. I might just drop this volume a little bit. Because I like the fighting music, but it is. Alright. So. I just went for a hit fight. Uh, those are lots of no no low numbers. We got 16, they got 10. We we hit the first pirate. Okay. Oh no. Not a lot. Uh, fight. Yeah. Nice. Doing well so far. Fight or luck. We don't have luck. No. <laughs> we, we're not lucky. <laughs> but we are, it's very skilled. Mm -hmm. Yes. There we go. <sighs> I think that's our first pirate knocked out. Yes, knocked out. We definitely didn't just <laughs> completely yeah. eviscerate them. <laughs> You've defeated the first pirate, and now you must face the second pirate. Ooh, he is slightly more skilled. They're not quite as skilled as we are. We hit the second not pirate. Quite. Because it adds on to our, our skill number. Mm hmm. Which is phenomenal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we don't need stamina, we're just good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gabe. Maybe we need a little, little bit of. <laughs> this was a great decision. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Wonderful. Yes. We hit the second pirate. You are triumphant. Well, I I uh I hope our friend Mungo's alright. I uh me too. You look round to see Mungo fighting the last remaining pirate. The captain <laughs> Before you can help him, the captain lunges forward, piercing poor Mungo through the chest. He lets out an anguished cry and drops onto the golden sand in a crumpled heap. The captain turns to face you, a grotesque sneer on his face, distorted by a long black scar running down the left side. You charge at the captain, seeking to avenge Mungo. You must fight! Oh, Mungo! We must! I mean, we all, we all knew Mungo and my West Country accent went long for this world. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's no better than the other ones. Yeah. This is easy. We can do this.
yeah. Ta-da. Turn to page 165. Well, that's Mungo avenged. <laughs> this calls for us to restart for Mungo. <laughs> I think if uh, if he didn't die, he would on the other page. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> the sand all around Mungo is red with blood. You kneel down beside him and gently lift his head in your arms. His eyes open a little and he manages a half smile despite his agony. In a whisper, he says, Well, we got him, but a lot of good it did me. Make sure you get the Lizard King for me, won't you? Uh. Then his eyes close and he slumps down dead. You bury him on the beach near the cliff, marking the grave with a sword skewered into the sand. You see a narrow goat track leading up the side of the cliff, and then look back at the chest lying on the beach. If you wish to walk up the goat track, turn to page 200. And if you wish to open the chest, turn to number 398. I, I don't see why we wouldn't open the chest. Yeah, it's free loot at this point, right? <laughs> Just reading through chat. I don't it's feel so good. It's a mimic. They were burying a mimic. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you prize open the chest and are surprised at its contents. Iron bars! The captain must have tricked his crew into believing they were burying treasure and the real treasure is still on board his ship. Not that it will do him much good now. You decide to put one of the iron bars in your backpack and walk over to the goat track to climb the cliff. Alright? Okay. Iron bar. Yeah. Right. That's going to be important later. I reckon so. So, there's something... So this is I'm just checking what these buttons do, so that's home bookmarks. I can't actually see them very well. It's options. That's a map. I think. Oh. So my map my map skills are not required. <laughs> well, I can't see the button very well, so <laughs> there's a chance it might not even work. Ah, if I click it comes up. So we have an adventure sheet, we can make a bookmark. I see, so we're going to go back to a decision that we've made. We can pop a little bookmark in. It was always the thing, you, you, you keep your finger on the page, just in case. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see the harm in walking into the uh, the, the circus tent. You're attacked by killer clowns. Okay, let's, let's go back. <laughs> Alright, let's page, turn to page 200. 